Hello, Mary Washington colleagues. This is Dave Henderson, Associate Professor of Accounting in the College of Business, and I've been asked to provide an overview of my Canvas page for my Summer Accounting 102 Principles of Accounting course, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to review the sections of Canvas that I use and also show you how I've uploaded different files to the modules section of Canvas, which I use quite extensively, okay? So in terms of the sections I use, I use announcements and I use grades to upload grades. And I don't use the quizzes here. I actually use the quizzes, the quizzes in McGraw-Hill Connect. And then I do use modules quite frequently to upload all the important files for the course, the syllabus, the schedule, um, all the course notes, so on and so forth. And I'll show you that here in a second. And I also use conferences here as well. So what I do is I deliver most of the content for the course asynchronously through lecture videos. And then I have a conference session weekly, once a week. And during that conference session, I review important course announcements. And I also review homework and I'll do some additional problems that were not discussed in the course lecture videos, okay? So let's take a look at the first annou the announcements here. And so the first thing I do is I've already, I went ahead and published this course today and you can see today is the 1st of June. And so here's what I'm saying for my welcome to Accounting 102. On Tuesday at, at 7.30 p.m., we'll have our first asynchronous. It's 100% live. And I give them some things that they need to know about the conference, some prerequisites, the date of the conference, what we'll do on that first conference. And then I've also attached my conferences and Canvas Connect lecture videos. And so if I open this file right over here, Here I have lecture videos on how to access the conferences in Canvas. This is one of them. And then this is just straight from Big Blue Button right there. And then I have two course introduction lecture videos. And these cover how I'll use Canvas and also how to access McGraw-Hill Connect. McGraw-Hill Connect, some of y'all may use that, but if you're not familiar with it, it holds a, it, it's just a course learning system through McGraw-Hill Connect and it holds, you can do quizzes, you can do homework, and also has an electronic version of the textbook. And so that's what I use. I use that for the textbook and quizzes and homework. And in these two lecture videos I'm discuss, I also give a bio of myself in the first lecture video and I discuss Canvas. And then also in the second one, I discuss Canvas and how to access the quizzes and homework in McGraw-Hill Connect. And then I discuss the other files that are uploaded to Canvas, okay? So if I come back over here and look at modules, I also post my syllabus and my schedule. Let me take a look at, my schedule's pretty vanilla. I mean, if anybody wants to see it, you can send me an email and I'll, I'll certainly send it on to you. There's nothing really too special there. I guess in the syllabus, the one thing I do say in, reiterate, which I think would be important for you, for anybody doing their syllabus would be to say, reiterate the importance of staying on schedule. It's really easy to get off schedule, I think, in an online course. You know, if you give them lecture videos, they could just watch all the lecture videos the night before the test and just be completely disengaged, take the tests, and then that's it. I just don't think they're going to do very well, especially in accounting. They have to watch it. They have to stay on track. So I say so many times in this in the syllabus, please stay on track. Please stay on track. The other thing I have right over here is an online schedule. And so if I look at this file, I'll do it in a table. So I list by week. So week one, this is a five-week class, summer of 2020. I, I show by week. Here's the topic. So the first week, the course introduction, uh, Appendix B, Chapter 14, Chapter 16. And so what should they do? Watch those lecture videos, complete the quizzes, and then 
complete that homework and then I list the quiz due dates. The second week they'll have their first exam. I list the due date right there, the second, the, then exam two, and then their final exam, and then they do have an extra credit paper, which they can send to me via email. So I think this is really useful setup. I'd recommend this where you list the week, the topic, any lecture videos that you want them to watch, and then any student tasks and assignments too. So they have it all set up right over here. I would also really encourage you to do some type of quizzes to hold them accountable for watching those lecture videos on a timely basis. Because see, if I didn't include these quizzes and I just said watch the lecture videos, I know what they're going to do. A lot of them are just going to watch the lecture videos, not all of them, but some of them are going to watch the lecture videos on the 2nd of July. All of them. And these lecture videos are long. There's a lot of content. and that is going to fail miserably. So to make sure they stay on, on track, I would recommend some type of quizzes or some type of assessment to make, to hold them to the schedule. Okay. So if I look back over here under modules, um, so I've gone over the online schedule. I think that's important. Let me also show you, I've put all the course notes, and lecture videos right over here. So I have a course pack right over here that I use. I use a PDF version of it and then a Microsoft Word version of the course pack. And if I look over here, I also have that conferences and Canvas lecture uh, videos that I put into the first announcement that's also located here. So I have a section here for course notes and lecture videos. These, This is the course pack. So can see it. I'll open up the PDF version. It just seems to run a little bit better. I'll download it. Well, you can see here's all the course notes for Appendix B. This is the way I do it. I list a topic and then I show them how to do simple interest co calculations, compound interest, and then do some problems. And so in the lecture video, maybe for example, I would go over this problem and then I would say, well, okay, with this one, pause the lecture video. And I tell them that in the lecture vid video, pause it, you complete this one on your own and then restart it and then check your work. That way they're not listening to me just talk all the time. They're actually listening to me going, discussing a topic, doing a problem, doing the problem on their own, and then restarting the lecture video to make sure that they did it right. This is kind of similar to what I do in class. And so I try to mimic that as much as possible in the online environment. These lecture videos with these cor this course back is how I deliver the bulk of the course content. Like I was saying earlier, I use the conferences portion to then answer any questions about these course notes in the, in the lecture videos and then to do some additional problems and review homework and then also make sure everybody's okay with the schedule. Okay. So if I come back, I have two sets of lecture videos and this has kind of evolved over time. I have some lecture videos that I recorded a while ago. And if I look at this one, you can see the file. These are a little bit longer and the lecture videos, there are longer lecture videos, okay? So they're a little bit longer and there's not as many of them. So they're longer than 15 minutes. Maybe they're half an hour. Some of them might even be an hour. So I didn't break up the chapter. So for example, this whole chapter on chapter 22 budgeting, this is going to be a long lecture video. So the students have the choice. They can watch this lecture video, which is longer for chapter 22. And again, some of these were recorded a while ago. And then what I did is over the last month or so, I've recorded shorter versions of those same content lecture videos. And so this is right here. And so what I've done is I have posted these. So you can see, for example, if we looked at chapter 22, the budgeting chapter, you saw in that first one, I had one whole one link, which is that lecture video is probably over an hour. And what I did over here with these newer lecture videos is I broke up the chapter into different lecture videos by content. So for example, I would say in this lecture video, I would cover the budget balance sheet. 
In this one, I discuss, discuss the sales budget and the schedule of cash collections, the production budget, the direct materials budget, rather than doing that one one long lecture video. That was kind of one of the suggestions from a student that I had in the spring 2020 course saying, well, A, some of my lecture videos I talk too fast. And sorry, I get that from my mom. It happens. I'm trying to work on it. In these lecture videos, I tried to talk more slowly and also break up that content into specific videos. And so none of these, the max length for any of these is 15 minutes. I think that works better, but the, the students have a choice. All right. Come back over here to modules. I do have some additional problems. And then I also have something in what I do during the semester is they have the option to purchase these course notes already shrink wrapped and three hole punched from the bookstore. But since this is online, I'm guessing a lot of students are not going to come down to the bookstore to buy it. So what they have the option to print this off themselves. Okay. This file shows them if they click on this file, this shows them how to print four pages of notes on one physical sheet so that they can save paper. That's what that shows them. And what I also do with their exams, I'm going to post the exam up on Canvas. And then what they'll do is they'll, I'll post the exam and I'll post an answer sheet and then they'll email the answer sheet back to me. So I don't use the Canvas quizzes or the can Canvas for exams. I just post the exam and ask them to email it back to me within a certain time frame. The other thing I do for each exam is I post four files. I give them a study guide. I give them a practice test, the answer to the practice test, and then an exam distribution. I include two options for extra credit papers. And then I also include a grade calculator just because Canvas doesn't, I, I don't think it weights the grades right. And so I just don't want them to look at their Canvas grade, their fi the final grade in Canvas and say, oh, that's what I have. So I've gotten a lot of questions about that. So what I do is I have a grade calculator after the first exam and then after the second exam. And then I show them how to use that to figure out, well, what do I need on the final in order to get X grade? Okay. The other thing is I've posted all the exercises the solutions to all the chapter exercises and problems. I posted all those up there so they can see, use those as they see fit. With regard to Connect, so this is where they can register for Connect. And then, as I was saying, I use Connect for the quizzes and for the homework. That's the, the main tip that I think I can give you is I've spent a lot of time condensing this. This canvas page used to be really long and I think a little bit confusing. And so what I try to do is make it simple and make it shorter. And so I just have syllabus and schedule. And then I think doing something with this online schedule, that table would be really helpful. And then I just put the course notes and all the lecture videos rather than, for example, including a separate link here for chapter 22 and then a chapter 23, then chapter 24. That gets really long. It just looks overwhelming up on Canvas. So I would encourage you to just make one document with links to all of your asynchronous lecture videos like that to keep it simple. And then you can see the Canvas page. I think it's laid out pretty nicely. It's It's got good headers and it's really not too long. And I spent a lot of time condensing it and making it easier to follow. Just not putting so much information up there because I think that's overwhelming. The other thing that I wanted to discuss is that I do have those specific due dates for the quizzes, but they can, all the quizzes are active starting on the first day of class. And so they could just go through and do all the quizzes early if they want to but they have to finish the quiz by that due date. I think that gives ultimate flexibility. So that's something that I would also recommend. Okay, well, that's the end of my recommendations and I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thanks so much.